Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Games to the video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to start things out with the Turing Titan. That's right, NVIDIA have actually finalized the uh, GPUs, and now we are seeing them in the hands of both developers and certain influencers. There are several images that have popped up on social media confirming the existence of these cards. So, we actually find that these cards pop up almost in a surprisingly fast way. There was no leaked benchmarks really, there was just a device ID that emerged like about a month or so, maybe slightly more, slightly less ago. And um, that device ID did tell us that there was a card that was almost certainly Titan class, it had uh, 12 gigabytes of memory and so on. But once again, there was no leaked benchmarks and there was no hint that the cards were this close to final production. And yet here we are with images of the final production GPUs and they do look very similar to what we have with, let's say, the RTX 2080 Ti, the Founders Edition models, but with a different uh, color scheme, which is more reminiscent of the Titan V. Either way, the cards are almost assuredly going to be the full fat TU-102. Remember the RTX 2080 Ti is slightly cut down. We see fewer CUDA cores and we also see a narrower memory bus and we also see only 11 gigabytes of memory. It will be fascinating to see exactly what NVIDIA do with the compute capabilities of the card, whether we're going to see increased clock speeds or the same clock speeds compared to, let's say, the 2080 Ti or the Quadro series and so on. There's also the question regarding pricing, because let's face it, it's not likely that NVIDIA are going to really reduce the cost of the 2080 Ti. We might see a slight reduction in price, but it's not like it's going to go down like several hundred US dollars, just to be totally blunt here. So we can probably assume that the RTX uh, Titans are going to be at least 1500 to 2000 US dollars, but this card is not really for the purposes of 4K gaming. Yes, you can game, of course, on the cards, much like the Titan Vs, for example, but they are also used for other things. They're in that prosumer space that um, if you do a lot of 3D work, a lot of uh, video editing and that type of thing, but you also perhaps want to do gaming, so you don't necessarily need the performance of Quadro, or you Quadro doesn't necessarily suit your workflow because let's say you're a games developer and so on, then the Titan class products are excellent. But let's face it, there are the uh, gamers, there are those who do buy them for the purpose of gaming anyway. So it's going to be interesting to see what the gaming performance is going to be like, particularly with ray tracing, but also high performance workloads as well. It's almost certain, given the timeline that we're seeing here, that either we're going to see the cards available for sale before Christmas, just prior to Christmas, or very early in 2019. So I'm interested to hear what your perspectives are regarding these cards. Once again, it's not surprising that NVIDIA are about to release them. To me, the biggest surprise is that we are actually seeing retail samples so soon without further leaks, but it is what it is. And now we're going to be discussing the Ryzen 3000 series of processors along with the X570 motherboard. So traditionally, AMD in the past with the last two generations of Ryzen CPUs, of course, that would be the Ryzen 1000, and 2000 series, they have released those processors along with the motherboards during the uh, April window. Uh, and then obviously subsequent motherboards, for example, the B, uh, B series of boards have released shortly thereafter. But it looks like AMD may be changing things up here. And from a leak that has emerged from the website gamer.com.tw, the X570 series of boards will be released at Computex, which is taking place late May of 2019. Now, there's a couple of other things that we can take away from this. The first is that you'll notice that we see confirmation of support for PCIe 4.0. Bear in mind that we knew that Zen itself could, of course, support that with the latest iteration. After all, Epic slash Rome has, and with Epic slash Rome, they did not increase the number of PCIe lanes. Instead, they basically went to the latest PCIe 4.0 generation, which does double the transfer speeds for the uh, bus. So we can probably presume that AMD will also be supporting this for Navi as well, which according to leaks slash what AMD themselves have said, uh, they are targeting the first quarter slash second quarter of 2019. So all of those dates do coincide with one another. 
There are a lot of questions though that are still left when it comes to the Ryzen 3000 series of processors and backwards and forwards compatibility and backwards slash forwards compatibility. Almost certainly if you buy a Ryzen 3000 series board, you will almost certainly be able to plonk in AMD 2000 series processor because, well, that does match up with what they've said in the past. But what happens if you buy a Ryzen 3000 series processor? Can you plonk it into, let's say, an X470 motherboard? Well, there's not going to be any answers yet. I doubt we're going to have uh, a different socket, personally speaking, but there might be issues. For example, obviously, a uh, Ryzen 3000 series CPU will not have PCIe 4.0 support in an X400 series board for obvious reasons. And whether it's going to have the capacity, that is the board itself, to drive a higher core count Ryzen CPU for numerous reasons, uh, you know, power delivery and just, well, the actual CPU, the actual uh, chipset itself, whether it would support that is unknown. Obviously, AMD themselves possibly have an idea by now, but it has not linked Currently, Intel from other reports are said to be increasing the core count for the mainstream series of uh, desktop processors, and they are planning to uh, bump it up to 10 cores, which makes sense because they do want to keep on par or possibly surpass AMD. So my guess is that most likely AMD will also be increasing the core count, but that has far been confirmed yet. The other question we're left with is whether Ryzen itself will launch prior to the X500 series board. It is possible that we could see, let's say, the 3700X launch in, let's say, April, and then they'll release the 500 series boards a little bit later. Or maybe AMD are trying to release everything simultaneously. Once again, we know that Navi is said to be late first quarter slash early second quarter. And the fact that, once again, uh, the boards appear to uh, be launching at Computex, AMD may decide to just release everything simultaneously to have as much uh, competition out as possible to totally refresh their lineup. AMD may decide to release the Ryzen 3000 series along with the X570 boards and Navi all simultaneously because once again if they are all PCIe 4.0 then they can claim that their ecosystem is the first on market which offers that uniformity of being able to say well look we have both the CPU and a GPU which is going to take advantage of that. Naturally the fact is, though, that until other devices become the norm to support PCIe 4.0, it's not really going to be a huge benefit, at least in the short term. But obviously, as devices uh, do become more standard in that support, then it's going to benefit AMD a lot more in later on in that year. And a quick note concerning the next generation of Threadripper processors, also known, of course, as the Threadripper 3000 series, we can almost certainly say that they, as well, will be supporting PCIe 4.0 when they launch too. We also might as well discuss a small piece of Intel news, and this does concern the HEDT series of processors from the company known as Glacier Falls. This will replace Skylake X and the recently released Refresh, for example, the 9980XE. So there has been a question, of course, when we will actually see Glacier Falls, and according to this leaked slide, it appears that Skylake X is going to have a fairly short lifespan because Glacier Falls, at least if this uh, schedule does hold up, is going to be released in the third quarter of 2019. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, if you have, like, share, comment, and subscribe because it helps the channel out a ton. You can also find us on Patreon and an Amazon affiliate link in the video description as well if you want to check those out. And I thank you very much for watching the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.